Hey, and welcome to the lecture. Before we jump into the learning, just a quick reminder to check out the workbooks available on modernoptician.com through the Ultimate Apprentice Optician Study Guide or available on Amazon worldwide. It's the best way to accompany this lecture so that you can fill in the blanks, label the diagrams, do everything all concurrently and elevate your training to the next level. All the links to the workbooks and the website are all in the description down below, so make sure to check it out. Other than that, enjoy today's lesson. All right, well, welcome to the first chapter. This is going to be the first lecture in this chapter about ocular anatomy. And before we get started, I definitely wanted to just touch base on the fact that Ocular anatomy is something that's often overlooked in a lot of opticianry courses, and uh, it really sucks because at the end of the day, we do deal with eyes, and vision is completely related to the eye, and unless we understand exactly how the eye works, it's kind of difficult to kind of grasp some of the other concepts in optics, and even in dispensing, and troubleshooting, and all the other things that we do as opticians. So. Throughout this entire chapter, we're going to go in depth throughout the, you know, throughout the, all the different parts of the eye, so that we have a pretty good understanding. We're not going to get in super granular on this. However, we're going to look at the functions, the compositions of all the different structures in the eye, so that we can see how they all work together to provide us vision, and how we as opticians can leverage this knowledge to help troubleshoot and understand how all the different, uh, you know, visual processes work. So uh, the first slides here, or the first. Uh, part of this chapter is going to be doing a bit of an overview and don't worry so much about this you know all the individual parts and the details of them so far because we're actually going to take every single part in this lecture or every single part that we look at in here and we're going to go into more depth uh, slide by slide and we're by the end of the entire chapter you're going to understand the eye so much better than you did before so why don't we jump into it and uh, start taking a look at how the eye looks so first thing we have the eyeball here we obviously have two of them and you can see here, just without even labeling this, you can see that there's a whole bunch of different structures on this. And it might be a little bit foreign to you, or maybe you have a little bit of experience with this. The reality is a quick Google search of the, you know, the eye and ocular anatomy, and you're going to start seeing different structures and things. So what I want to do right now is I want to kind of do a little bit of a global look at where all the different structures are and have maybe a little bit of a discussion about it and just leave it at that. And then throughout the, you know, the following lectures, we're gonna start looking at all the different parts of the eye and seeing exactly what they do. So first off, at the very front of the eye, you have the cornea. And we're gonna you know, study the cornea in depth because as opticians, this is probably one of the most important structures that we need to know because we deal with this on a daily basis. It is one of the biggest components of the eye involved in vision. Uh, we fit contact lenses on top of the cornea, and we need to know the cornea in quite a bit of depth. Uh, in the whole structure, the whole white part of the eye that, that encompasses the eyeball is called the sclera, and of course, we're going to touch on that as well. And here, the conjunctiva, it's difficult to see in a cross section of the eye, but the conjunctiva kind of forms the mesh or the membrane that links the, con the, sorry, that links the, the cornea to the sclera and actually lines the inside of the eyelids as well, and we'll go into more depth on that as well. Colored part of the eye that's on the inside, in, right behind the anterior chamber, is the iris. Uh, we're all familiar with the iris. We could see it when we look at people that, you know, constitutes the color of the eye. And at the center of the, of the iris is the pupil, which is actually a hole. The pupil's not actually a structure. It's a circular hole at the center of the iris, and the pupil and the iris are very, very closely linked, and it's actually the iris that controls the size and sometimes the shape of the pupil. Uh, so it's definitely something that we absolutely have to know more detail about in the future. Behind all that is the crystalline lens responsible for changing the focus of the eye. We talk a lot about the crystalline lens when it comes to a concept called presbyopia, where people start to lose their ability to read later in or focus on near objects later in life. We also talk about it a lot uh, due to cataract formation. So, of course, this is something we're going to touch on in much more depth in future slides. Uh, and, you know, between the iris and the crystalline lens is the anterior chamber. Anterior chamber is kind of a void filled with a fluid called aqueous humor. Uh, the anterior chamber is very important to ophthalmologists when they're looking for different signs of inflammation. Also very important when it comes to cataract surgery. The aqueous humor actually inside the anterior chamber actually um, maintains interocular pressure. We'll talk about how that's produced and how that's drained and everything in the future. Uh, and behind the iris is the posterior chamber. 
as opticians, we talk a little bit less about the posterior chamber, but we're going to talk about a little bit more about how this all kind of ties into the whole internal workings of the eye. Uh, up top here is the ciliary body. Uh, has a few functions from aqueous humor production to uh, helping with the accommodative reflex of changing the focus of the eye and a couple of other things as well. So another important structure. Uh, inside, sandwiched underneath the, uh, underneath the sclera and uh, and the retina, which we'll talk about in a second, is the choroid. And this is the vascular layer of the eye where all the blood flows through. We're going to talk about all the other structures. A lot of them don't even have blood in them. Uh, the choroid is the main blood source of the eye. And if you know anything about anatomy, blood is the life juice that allows us to, uh, to permeate oxygen throughout our tissues and whatnot. So uh, the, having a blood supply is extremely important, and that is in the choroid. Uh, at the center of it all, the big void here in the center of the eye is called the vitreous. It is filled with vitreous humor, and it gives the eye its shape. You know, outward force of having this gel-like vitreous humor in the center will help keep everything kind of stuck together. It uh, applies outward force, and uh, it constitutes a huge volume. The largest volume of the eyeball itself and as we alluded to the retina now the retina is not just a structure the retina is actually an entire layer on the inside but there's a very important part of the retina uh, the macula and the fovea centralis where most of the vision magic takes place and of course we're going to talk a lot more about that and at the very back is the optic nerve which is kind of like your processing uh, center where all the information that the retina gathers in the visual process gets transmitted through the optic nerve to the brain and uh, again we'll go into detail uh, in the future. Now before I move on I want to make a very good point here where you should know where all these structures are. Any optician out there if you were to give them an unlabeled diagram of the eyeball they should know where everything is uh, and as a matter of fact as you can see like all the different there's actually more structures like a little bit more granular structures that we don't talk about on a daily basis these structures i didn't even count them but you know you can give them a quick count these structures here are the important ones that you should know where everything is focus on if anything at the end of this lecture if you can actually take an eyeball and diagram uh, and, and label the diagram and know where everything is you've learned something. Now, the beauty of this is included in this course is the workbook, and the workbook actually has a unlabeled uh, eyeball, which you should have been doing along with me here, um, or you can go back after and do it. The important thing here is that you need to be writing these things down, and that's the, the, the theme for this entire course, and that's why we have the workbook. For me to just tell you and show you is one thing, but for you to actually write it down, make your own notes, uh, that's a huge part of learning. The act of taking that information, writing it down, and a lot of times in your own words, is what's going to allow you to learn and remember a lot of the concepts. All right, why don't we move on to a little bit more information uh, you know, related to the overview of the eye. Okay, now that we've labeled the eye and that we have a, a bit of an idea where all the structures are, let's just talk about some general facts and things that as opticians, uh, we need to be a little bit more aware of when it comes to discussing ocular anatomy, function, physiology, all the things that kind of, you know, all the background information that allows us to understand how vision works. So first of all, um, there's a couple different tunics of the eye. So there's actually three different ones. So the first one we wanna talk about is the fibrous tunic and it's composed of the cornea and the sclera. And this is very much because of the way, the reason we group these together is because of their makeup. They're, they're made up of fibrous collagen fibers. They don't have the same function. They don't even have the same look, but they are similar in certain ways that we can actually group them together. They're actually the outside shell too, right? The scleric is most of it, and then the cornea is kind of the front third of it. So remember, the cornea and sclera make up the fibrous tunic. Now, there's also the vascular tunic of the eye, which if you think about it, vascular meaning blood supply, uh, and it's called the uvea, and it's composed of the iris, the choroid, and the ciliary body, okay? So remember that these things, the reason we group these together, and it's not, has nothing to do with function, that these all have, you know, they all serve different functions in the overall uh, mechanisms of the eye, but they're like tissues, all right? They're, they're permeated with blood in this case, and this is why we call the vascular uh, tunic. The choroid is the largest of it, and then it kind of blends into the iris and the ciliary body, and there's blood flowing through all these tissues. So we remember those as being 
the vascular tunic. Comparatively to the fibrous tunic, the fibrous tunic actually has no very little blood in it. It might be little capillaries in the sclera and stuff like that that have a little bit of blood supply. The cornea is actually completely avascular, something we'll talk about in more detail. But this is kind of what differentiates all the uh, different structures and we kind of group them into the type of uh, the, the tunic or the type of tissue that it is. And the third tunic that we talk about is the nervous tunic. And, I, and you know, if you know anything about, you know, neurology or even high school level neurology and, and, and science, you might be able to predict that, you know, considering that it's the nervous tissue and a nervous tunic, that the retina and the optic nerve would be part of it. Some literature actually just talks about the optic nerve, but the retina is not necessarily a neurological tissue per se. However, it has very, very close links to the optic nerve. The retina and the optic nerve are tied together very, very closely. They share a lot of cells and a lot of different structures, and they're kind of one in the same because the retina transmits its information. It takes uh, photoelectric energy and transmits it into chemical energy via the optic nerve and then eventually to the brain and it uh, and, and that's basically what's responsible for vision. So try to think of these three tunics um, and you know it's not something that is discussed every single day but it helps understand how the different structures and the different tissues of the eye all kind of blend together and work together. You'll notice we didn't we didn't talk about the anterior chamber, we didn't talk about the crystalline lens, the vitreous, all the other parts. It's just that these are the main structural parts of the eye and they compose the different types of tissue that you might encounter. Okay, so just try to remember all those. And again, make sure you write them down uh, yourself and make any notes that you kind of feel are necessary. And uh, that's about it for that. Let's talk about why this is important to us as opticians. So seeing as how this is the first lecture of the chapter and of the course, uh, you're going to notice here that I've written optician significance. Every single lecture that we do is going to have a final slide where we talk about optician significance. I've been through so many courses and different programs, auditing them and seeing, you know, what what the holes are in, in optician training. And a lot of the times we don't take the time to discuss why this is so important to us and our jobs. And at the end of the day, when you're learning things, isn't that what's ultimately important? You know, you can throw all this information to people, but unless they know the nuances of why we need to know this, then it feels like useless learning. I remember, you know, as a student myself, having colleagues constantly saying like, why do we need to know this? The reality is, is that there's not a single piece of information out there when it really when relating to vision care that isn't useful to you. But sometimes we need context as to why we're learning these things so we don't feel like we're going on the wrong path. Okay, so why don't we look at a few things of why what we've learned today is important to us. The first thing is an analogy that I have been using for a decade now, and I, I say it to every student that I ever have, and it's a more of a question, is that would you trust a mechanic that doesn't understand how engines work? Now think about that for a second. If you go to the mechanic shop and you bring your car in, you have a problem in making a, a noise or you know, stalling or whatever it may be, and the mechanic says, well, I don't know, I'm sure we can figure it out. And they, they pop the hood and they start looking at things and they're not sure, you know, what the, they can't differentiate between the engine and, and the transmission and, and whatnot. And I'm not very well versed on cars myself. However, you probably get the point. It's the same concept in our field. If someone comes to you with problems and you don't understand how the eye works, if a person's been referred to you because they have a particular problem with their vision and you're not familiar with the terms that are being used, or anything like that, it discredits you as a professional and uh, it can be very frustrating for both the patient and for you too because you know nobody likes to be backed up against a wall. Uh, you know, understanding how the eye works and how everything kind of works together is going to make you better at your job, make you more confident and make things a lot easier for you. So remember, there's not a single thing about the eye that is out of your realm of, of importance because even this, even if you're not treating, you're not managing diseases and things like that, understanding what all these things are helps you be in the loop so that you know the patient can have confidence in you and, and, and feel like they're in good hands. Um, another thing is that understanding vision, refractive error, and vision correction, which is basically the definition of being an optician, relies heavily on the eye. The, the parts of the eye, the cornea, the crystalline lens, the retina, and basically everything in between is responsible for vision. And we're going to go through optics and how everything kind of blends together and how uh, the science of light affects, you know, is ultimately responsible for vision. But this structure, the eye, is what actually allows all that stuff to happen. So without understanding all the parts, you're never going to have 
a full grasp of how all this stuff works. I, I encounter opticians all the time who do not have a good grasp of ocular anatomy. And as a result, they don't often have a very good grasp of everything else. They can get, you know, fake it till you make it. However, if you want to be really, really good at what you do, it all starts with ocular anatomy. Um, another thing too that's important in this is we have to understand what normal looks like. As opticians, we are first line healthcare workers. Now, we don't treat disease, we don't manage it per se. However, if you're working in a mall, for example, on a Sunday, uh, there are no doctor's offices open. You need to be able to recognize what's normal and what's not. Um, now, there's a little bit of a slippery slope when it comes to legality of off offering advice and doing different things, and we're not going to touch on that today. However, it is extremely important that you understand when to refer and when things are not as urgent as you know the patient may feel. Um, and of course, that comes with experience and confidence. However, understanding what normal is allows you to make better decisions and help and help advocate for your patient a little bit better. Um, and that's going to be a huge component when we get into contact lens fittings, where you actually are somewhat responsible for maintaining the health of the person's eye and recognizing when things have gone wrong. So remember, understanding what normal looks like is always your goal. You don't have to be an expert on, at, at categorizing all the diseases and knowing exactly what's, you know, what the problem is. But there's something to be said about knowing when something's not normal. Um, and you know, which bleeds into this as well a little bit is recognizing pathology. And these are both very similar, uh, not knowing what, you know, knowing something is not normal and even recognizing what the pathology may be can help you make decisions as far as how quickly this needs to be addressed, uh, who it needs to be referred to. And another thing as an optician is, you know, even though you're not necessarily counseling and treating and, and diagnosing, you can be reassuring sometimes because we, again, are the first line. We're very much like the nurses of, of the hospital, uh, but in dispensary, we have to manage, you know, people's kind of stress sometimes and, you know, recognizing different pathologies, and different things helps with that. And uh, of course, Im extremely importantly, we, in our field, we work side by side with other professionals. We work with optometrists, we work with ophthalmologists sometimes, maybe even orthoptists, ocularis. There are a number of, and if you don't know uh, who those professionals are, we'll discuss that a little bit more depth later on. However, um, understanding the vernacular, the language that they use helps you be in the loop and it also allows you to avoid errors and miscommunication. Uh, there's nothing worse than when a doctor has faith in their optician because sometimes those relationships can be a little bit strained. However, if you have a good doctor who has a really good relationship with you and you don't want their faith in you to be decreased because you never seem to know what they're talking about, right? So, you know, being in the loop, understanding what all these things mean is extremely paramount to, to increasing your communication skills with other professionals. So I hope you kind of get a bit of an idea now why the parts of the eye are so important. We haven't even gone into really much depth about this stuff, but now we have the basis. We have, we've looked at the eye, what the structures look like. Now we can start going into more depth part by part so that we can see how, you know, what they all do, how they all work together and uh, ultimately become better opticians. Hope you've enjoyed this one and uh, let's, let's move on to the next.